Blessed weekend sa inyong lahat mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran. Kumusta na po ba yung lahat? Welcome once again sa ating episode sa God's Word for Today devotional. And let me read sa ating pagpatuloy sa narrative that Stephen defended his um, testimony sa Acts chapter 7 verse 9 to 16. Ang mga patriarka dahil sa inggit kay Jose ay ipinagbili siya sa Egypto. Ngunit ang Diyos ay kasama niya. Siya ay iniligtas sa lahat ng kanyang kapighatian at binigyan siya ng biyaya at karunungan sa harapan ng paraon na hari ng Egypto. At kanyang pinili siya upang mamahala sa Egypto at sa buong bahay niya. Dumating noon ang tagutom sa buong Egypto at sa Kanaan at nagkaroon ng malaking kahirapan at walang matagpo ang pagkain ng ating mga Ninuno. Ngunit nang mabalitaan ni Jacob na may trigo sa Egypto, sinugo niya ang una ang ating mga ninuno. At sa ikalawang pagdalaw ay nagpakilala si Jose sa kaniyang mga kapatid at nakilala ng paraon ang pamilya ni Jose. Pagkatapos ay nagsugo si Jose. Nanyayahan ni, niya si Jacob ng kanyang, ng kanyang ama at ang lahat niyang kamag-anak na 75 katao. Kaya nagtungo si Jacob sa Egypto doon ay namatay siya at ang ating mga ninuno. Sila ay binalik sa Shechem at inilagay sa libin ang binili ni Abraham sa halaga ng pila mula sa mga anak ni Hamor sa Shechem. This is the continuation of Stephen's um, explanation about his message that uh, Jesus came ready from Abraham and uh, the worship of God It's not confined in the temple because ang mga patriarchs, ang kanila mga ninuno ay they were worshippers of God before the temple and the law were given to Moses. And, and this time, ang ating focus ay sa kay Jose who was one of the patriarchs na ibinibenta ng kanyang mga kapatid. And uh, the important truth about this is that although it sounds na parang It was like a, a bad luck or hindi magandang nangyari kay Jose. But God allowed it to happen. It was God's plan. God was with him all the time. Joseph's older brothers, having been jealous of Jacob's regard towards him. Kasi maganda ang pagtrato ni Jacob sa kanyang anak na si Jose kaysa mga kapatid. So ang ginawa nila is that this, they sold Joseph to a slave trader at one time. And then sinabihan nila yung tatay nila na pinatay siya ng wild animal. So he was sold then to a nobleman in Egypt. His name was Potiphar. And the story goes that Joseph's language in prison cell. But despite Joseph's time in slavery and then in prison in Egypt, God was with him. This is one of the truth that I think we, we can really hang on in times na hindi natin makikita at ma-explain yung ating mga experience. We cannot really doubt that God is with us. In the dungeon, while he was in prison, maaring masabi natin, he became forgotten and unknown to his family and friends. But not unto God. God did not forget him. However, during this time that he was in prison for maybe 17 to 20 years in that span, God had blessed Joseph with training, wisdom, and positions of power and responsibility. He continued to grow in his walk with the Lord. He continued to uh, serve God there and to be a blessing. Naging blessing sa mga tao doon. So you cannot really put down a person who, is, who believes on God. But he continues to be a blessing continues to shine even in the darkest moment in his life, in his circumstances. All the while, si Jacob naman was mourning. 
because of Joseph's absence. And ang kanyang mga kapatid, maybe they thought he was already a miserable slave somewhere, maybe namatay siya, or he would be he would be uh, forever gone. Hindi na sila magkita, forgotten. Ang kanilang ginagawa ay hindi na magkikita. They will not be accountable anymore. But they were wrong. They had no idea that God would use their sin against Joseph as a way for Joseph to become a prince of Egypt. And then, nang ginamit siya doon sa Egypt to rescue them and even the surrounding nations from famine, from dying of famine. So they went to Egypt to buy food because when Jacob heard that mayroong pagkain, mayroong trigo sa Egypt, during the time of famine, pinadala niya yung kanyang mga anak doon. And to cut the story short, in their second going there, second time, they were reconciled with Joseph. They were really surprised. It was really a surprise to them. So Jacob and his clan of 75 people were invited and they went to Egypt and settled there at Goshen. Doon namatay si Jacob. But in, in the plan of God, ang kanyang mga buto, ang kanyang mga remains were carried back to Shechem. Itong Shechem ay doon po nakabili si Abraham ng lugar na doon po sila inilibing siya at ang kanyang asawa ni si Sarah. Na binili niya ito with a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. Na totoo pala. That although Jacob went to Egypt, pero hindi siya na natili doon, nabalik talaga siya doon sa promised land because that's the promise of God that they will settle in the promised land even his remain. So what can we see it here? Ang ating makita yung kamay ng Panginoon, yung isip ng Panginoon, yung kanyang wisdom. God sees the end from the beginning. As Isaiah declared in Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And from instant times, things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. Joseph's journey from slavery to imprisonment, then at one moment he became a leader in Egypt. This was an extraordinary. Did not even explain. Who could have thought that the hatred and sin of his brothers was the key to unfold God's plan in his life. As Joseph expressed when they were reconciled in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, he said this to his brothers, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Kung walang famine na nangyayari, Joseph would be able to see his brother again. Maliba, yes, indeed sila magkita. Paul had beautifully articulated this in his writings in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we love this verse. And we know that for those who love God, all things, everything, work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. Hindsight is always the best sight. Kasi magkikita natin na, oh, ganito palang ginagawa ng Panginoon. We can always appreciate the plan of God because it's something beyond our grasp, beyond our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We can trust that God is on top of everything. Stephen's recounting of Joseph's story also has helped him to de demonstrate to his accusers that despite their claimed reverence to Moses or of Moses, the Israelites have a long history of rejecting God's prophets. Diba? Kasi ang ginawa ng mga patriarchs sa kay Joseph, yun po ang ginawa nila sa kay Jesus. They rejected the Messiah. Joseph parallels Jesus' identification as the stone that the builders rejected that became the cornerstone. That's the ironical part. The stone that they rejected became the chief cornerstone. 
Though Joseph was sold by his brothers, God used him as the foundation for survival for nations caught in famine. Similarly, in the timeless by Jesus Christ, but Jesus, through his sacrifice, is the foundation of everyone's salvation. There's no salvation apart from him. Walang salvation na matatanggap o nating ma-receive only in the Lord Jesus Christ. If they only believe, but suddenly, these accusers did not believe Stephen's words. But in fact, they continued to persecute Stephen. Well, walang history, bahagi sa history that is isolated. Everyone or everything in history is part of his story. God was on top of everything sa buhay ni Abraham, Jacob, or ni Esaac, ni Jacob, the 12 patriarchs, even to Joseph. And even we can trust today that God is on top of everything in our lives. Everything works together for good. Mas kano yung kalagayan mo ngayon, trust God that He is in control. Manalangin tayo. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you that you can see in the life of Joseph. A beautiful story, though it was very disheartening, very um, very hard for Joseph to understand at the beginning. Yet at the end of the day, he said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And help us to recognize, Lord, that you are working not to harm us, but you allow things, hardships, difficulties to happen in our lives in order that your plan will come to pass in our lives. And help us just to believe in you, Lord. Give us the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.